Alright guys, what's going on? My name is Art Supplies and as promised, I'm going to do a track breakdown of my tune, Wasting Your Breath. Um, it's been out for a little while now, uh, released the end of 2018. So uh, it's time to dive in and show you a few of the elements. I've picked out a couple of things that I want to show you and um, basically how I made them and how I came up with the sounds, some processing, things like this. So hopefully uh, you can find some of it helpful and use it in your own productions. So let's dive in. Wasting your breath. breath. First things first, uh, I wanted to go through the percussion. So if we jump into the percussion folder here, um, I like to, obviously you can see everything's um, really neatly sort of laid out. I like to have everything labeled uh, in groups and things like this. So all my percussion um, bar the kick uh, run through the percussion group here. I've got a, a VSC2 compressor running through a sort of dry wet bus. Um, I'll go into like the details of that a little bit later, but essentially if we have a look, this one, it's a really cool um, compressor from Brainworks uh, working to sort of bring everything up a little bit tighter. I've put some tube warmth from Camel Crusher on there and then uh, some full parallel glue compression just from the, the standard one from Ableton. Now, this just brings everything together in terms of the individual layers. Uh, you could see hats, claps, snares, all these kinds of things. So if we jump into the hats, for example, um, I think these ones are the offbeat hats. Let's have a listen. Yep, so you can see I've taken uh, the lows right out of that hat, um, side chain to a side chain layer. So everything I run through, I run through a side chain layer up here, which is cashmere clap, um, just running on all four of the beats or every single beat. Um, and then I've just muted it up here as well. So it just turns off, it's just running the rhythm for me of the, the beat of the track. So you can see it ducking in and out here with the tune. Um, now, I've also got some filtering on there, some effects. You can see Shakers, very much the same thing, a bit of compression on the shaker, um, some OTT, which is up or downward compressor multiband kind of thing um, from XF uh, something OTT. So go check that out. It's one of the most beast plugins you'll ever come across. Uh, reverb. Again, compression oh, and then some, some panning effects. So I like to have my stuff like going around the head in the headphones and sort of spinning around um, the listener. So that's what I've done with the shaker. It's at a mix of 74% and just going nice and wide around the ears, left and right. So that's that. Um, that's pretty much my percussion. If we listen to it all together in the drop section. CPU struggling. Wow. Here we go. Struggle street for the CPU. Let's see if we can turn down this. Because this is such a big project, I'm going to have to bump it right down to the highest sort of uh, number of samples. Um, pretty much to a, a compensate for how much it's struggling with CPU. So you can hear the perks in there. Shaker going around the head. <laughs> anyway, so that's the percussion. Um, plenty of uh, sort of funky things in there. Uh, as you can also see, I like to use this delay on all the tracks. They're sort of delayed five milliseconds ahead or behind, depending on what I like to do um, to give it some groove. I like to use that kind of groove and the groove that's built in down here into the groove pool as well. But that's percussion. Uh, kick. Kick's fairly strong in this one, just a solid kind of uh, kick. It's from the ADSR kits, one of the house kits. And I've just like smashed on some EQ. I think that, yeah, that compressor's working. And then um, just a bit more EQ shaping just to kind of make it fit into the track alongside the bass, which is really the most important part of this track. As you can see, I've been referencing it to Bass Cannon Remix, uh, Matroda did. 
let's go, before we go on to the bass, we'll go on to the vocals. This was a little sample I found. I've heard it in a few different things as well, and they are some of the different packs, but it's what you get. Pitch down. Wasting your breath. 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 So, yeah, it's kind of just chopped. And then pitch down, uh, complex pro, pitch down, 62 formants. I find that around 60 it seems to sound pretty nice. Um, 40 formants seems to kind of go, this is if you're pitching down a fair bit. Um, 40 formants around there is kind of a more deeper and muffled, but like kind of more G house sound. Um, and then 60 kind of gives you a little bit more clarity in what they're saying. Um, or your audience must be impressed or you're wasting your breath. Breath. So that's the, the drop line, obviously. Um, I built it up. Breath, 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 breath. Wasting your breath. So there's quite a lot of automation going on um, with this part in the vocal, so it can really stretch out... Um, the track and the build and really kind of widen. Uh, so if we have a look down here, you can see that the transposition is up 12 semitones. That's because it's been built up in this first one. Um, if you have a look at the transposition, it's going up from zero to 12 semitones, then drops down to the uh, normal tuning and then back up to 12 semitones up. And then we go up another 12 up to 24 from the original root note. Um, I've also, as you can see, automated some of the the volume to come down on the clip so it doesn't um, get too loud. And then if we have a look at some of the stuff, so vocal processing, some different cool plugins in there, um, lots going on here. So yeah, this is the, the plugin I wanted to show you. I've shown this before in one of the tutorials. It's called Easy Washout, similar to Endless Smile from Data Life, uh, and it's if we have a look at the automation here, it's just giving it a lot of space. And if you have a look at all the, the chain that's on here, it's giving it delay, filters, reverbs, all that kind of stuff as you turn the knob up. So it's kind of like what you'd do if you're DJing. So it brings it right up, um, back to the drop line, and away we go. Now, effects, uh, last thing I want to jump into before the bass, because the bass is probably the most iconic thing. Uh, I've got a lot of the breathing, so I was sort of thinking wasting your breath, I wanted to have a breath element, so there's a breathing layer in here which is almost Darth Vader-like. And you can hear it gives it a lot of atmosphere. So that's a kind of breathing effect that I really wanted to add in there. Atmosphere and stuff, this kind of thing is, just adds a another layer, just pad layers. Uh, I think that's really important when you're doing these things, like atmospheric layers. Um, sweeps, rises, white noise, all just kind of sample stuff and things I've made. Uh, anyway, let's last but not least dive into the bass. This is my favorite uh, part to go through. Um, Oh, I haven't gone through the leads yet. Let's go through, sorry, skip. We're going back to the leads. The the pad uh, melody that I've got going is that kind of sweeping, um, da, 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 da. that's that kind of melody. Uh, let's play it. So I really like that. That's a pad from Spire, um, a filter called Texture. I'm not sure what bank that's from. Oh, there you go, Commercial House. Um, love Spire, it's a really cool one. Got some really awesome sounds. Compression EQ, some more warmth on there. I'm just going, I go crazy sometimes with plugins. Like, I just want to really richen up the sound. And as far away from the original preset as I can get, gives me my own sound. Um, so really boosted that up. Uh, and then automated some of the reverb, I believe, with... The filtering just to kind of give it that real long stuff but it's it's got a long decay and long tail on the sound anyway um from spire so the next one um oh i think so those are, weren't even in the original track i don't know what they are these uh sort of hoover what have i called it hoover stab 
Um, that's that kind of punchy lead that you sound that comes in the second break. So what I've got is a central sound and then obviously one pan to the left, one pan to the right and I've slightly delayed that. Normally I'd probably bring that one another one out of this one's way so they all sound a little bit wider. But three of them doing different things, slightly EQ'd differently as you can see down the bottom um, just to kind of bring out different parts in each thing. Uh, and that is just automated. It's from a, another Spire preset, Scary Monster, um, and then messed around with, with the various kind of culprits that I like to use, and then some more washout for that effect. I think the washout comes in into the break. Um, and then pads, all that kind of thing. So last but not least, bass. Let's do it. The bass is from Serum, uh, would you believe? I know that's kind of obvious for most things but this one I've done some really crazy processing to make it just like distort and give it that real fatness that you're like oh craziness you know um, so it's Harper is the original preset from uh, Mo Mowgli's Closet Bass Monsters Volume 3 uh, if you were wondering and then I've slightly messed around with this these settings in here and the effects and then some warming from satin, clean, more saturation and distortion from Camel Crusher, fattening up from Sausage Fattener and limiting. And then look at this hard compression that's going on. Absolutely nuts. Um, that really just blows the sound out. And then I'm doing more compression and over compressing and more warmth just to really blow that sound out because that's just what I wanted, something that's really different. And um, it brings out all these unique tones and uh, kind of harmonics that you wouldn't normally get from a sound with, if you don't push it really far. It doesn't mean push everything that far and it certainly means, you know, be careful about it. Like each one of those things is done in a way that brings out a certain quality in the sound um, and then I've re kind of processed it after that. So make sure you kind of go through and do it. Don't just whack everything on because it might not work. Um, anyway, more compression. Now, like, this is crazy. I've got three different side chains here. One's to the original side chain, one's to the kick, so that it still has that bounce when there's no kick. But when the kick comes in, it actually takes slightly more out of the bass and gives more room for the kick. So it's not, you know, with the clap side chain, it's very short. Um, and other things, so I like to kind of have two side chains playing at the same time to really fit around what's in the track. Um, I haven't really seen anyone do that. I didn't know if I where I learned that from, apart from just to try it out, and it kind of worked. So um, passed it on to you. The other thing is a bomb. Um, so the big sub drop that I have in the track is also done to the bass. So when the sub drop comes and you want the bass to come back up through it over the top. Uh, you need to make sure the two are mixed together a lot better. Um, and then also another one for this verb kick as well. Same reason, get it out of the way. Now, more EQing to do some mixing, take away some of the harsher sounds, limiting. Um, some of these I don't even think are working. But uh, yeah, one of the hugest kind of chains you've ever seen in your life for a bass sound. But anyway... Let's have a listen um, and we'll show you kind of what each thing does and hopefully that can break down a bit of a uh, bit of it for you. So let's loop over this section here. Still glitching out. Like, wouldn't you glitch out if you had those million plugins on there as well? I'm just one that's really bad with not wanting to bounce something out too many times because as soon as I convert it to audio, I can't go back and tweak it. And I'm like really kind of like, oh, I want to dive back into that preset. Um, so I just can't help but to layer things on and then the project just gets massive and I'm just dealing with a computer that's like freaking out. So, you know, maybe learn something from that, but not don't do what I do. Um, yeah, anyway, so let's go through it. If we take off pretty much, if I take off everything, I'll quickly take off like most of the stuff that's really doing something. 
There you go. So this is the original preset. So it's a bit more crunchy um, in the top sounding and it's not overly, well it's not overly loud. Let's boost it again. So yeah, it's really not kind of nice. Um, so if we add in some of the warmth and the distortion, bit more punchy, um, sausage fattener to boost it up again, which is doing some fatness and then a little bit of gain reduction, I believe. Um, cool, so then I wanted to compress the hell out of it to really um, even out the harshness in the high frequencies and the lows. So I'll bring this down back to 11 something, wherever it was, and then whack the compressors on. Um, So now it's lost, it's been squashed a bit. So I wanted to kind of then bring out some more of those frequencies that we lost by squashing it so much. So satin again, and then the OTT, which is really kind of just tickling the tops of each of the things. Um, I'd normally kind of bring these in a little bit to each band, but it seemed to just be doing what I wanted to do without much um, touching. The tube warmth again, a little bit more saturation, just really was able to play around with that and it gives us our sound back. So still really fat and compressed, but then it comes at with that crunch and that aggressiveness that you missed from compressing it. So that's pretty much the bass sound. Um, and that's the track, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'm gonna be going through Forget the Money very soon to show you the new elements in that that I did um, before dropping a new tune very soon. So stay tuned for all that. Thanks for watching. See you guys soon. Wasting your breath.